So Sailor Moon... <clears throat> I have a new outfit. Before we start, a couple of quick announcements. I'm launching my Patreon. Your support on Patreon helps fund videos like this and comes with additional perks, and allows me to create content that would otherwise be impossible. To celebrate, I also have a new Utena animatic on my animation channel. I originally made it to celebrate hitting 3,000 subs on this channel, which I have more than that now. So, uh, thank you. Yeah, let's get started. Sailor Moon Crystal ended up being kind of a disappointment to a lot of Sailor Moon fans, myself included. You can watch any number of videos on YouTube unpacking how and why exactly it failed to fill its predecessor's big and stylish boots, but focusing only on Crystal's imperfections misses the true lost potential that could have been mined from the Sailor Moon Caverns of Silver Crystal lore. Sure, a faithful adaptation to the Sailor Moon manga with beautiful new digital paint would have been really nice if it had been executed properly, like the 2011 version of Hunter x Hunter, which is kind of fascinating to me considering that the authors are married to one another. Or something like the 2020 adaptation of Fruits Basket, which had a lot of input from the author and changed and expanded different aspects to tighten up the story. But I don't think that was what the majority of the fanbase really wanted in Sailor Moon's case because most of us didn't grow up on the manga, we grew up on the anime. The manga and the anime are fine, but I think as a property, there's a lot that could be done if Sailor Moon were treated as something like a cinematic universe and less of a linear story. Which is why I'm proposing a Sailor Moon space opera reboot. Sailor Moon has this enormous cast of unique and interesting characters that the series never does anything substantial or long-term with. Even the main inner senshi never feel like they have enough time to explore character-building arcs or are able to breathe independently away from Usagi, aside from one episode a season devoted to them doing a thing. Also, for clarity, I'm going to be using the Japanese names. I grew up with the Deke dub, so I do still think of some of these characters in my head as their dub names, like Darian and Molly, but that would be nightmarishly confusing if I only switched the names for some of the characters. So yeah, here's the pitch. Sailor Moon Space Opera would be a completely alternate timeline, created by some sort of person or being that has somehow interfered with the natural flow of time. Anything that I didn't like has been retconned. I mean, <laughs> changed because it's an alternate timeline. So if the manga, 90s anime, and Crystal are all timelines A, B, and C, then this one would be D. Sailor Moon already had a surprising amount of nonsensical time travel in it, like a lot. Pluto was the gatekeeper of time, Chibiusa traveled back to the past, all the scouts went to the future at some point. We can have alternate realities, it ain't that far-fetched canon-wise, it fits within the series' limitations. The events of Space Opera would unfold a couple of years after the last season, Sailor Stars, and the main storyline is about the Sailor Senshi traveling through space, recolonizing and rebuilding planets that had been destroyed and abandoned after the Sailor Wars. Which if you aren't familiar with the Sailor Wars, well first of all, buckle up. The Sailor Wars were basically the impetus for the A plot of Sailor Moon. The reason space is dead and empty is because in the distant past, all the life forms on these other planets with their own respective senshi had a galaxy-sized war and destroyed everything in their fight against a primordial evil simply known as Chaos. We never get to see any of that happen, mind you, which again, would have been a cool reboot idea, but whatever. The space travel mechanic is Steven Universe style, so once you've established a portal hub, you can transport between any functioning hub on other planets. But if you're trying to go somewhere new, you have to actually travel there the long way by spaceship. Because frankly, does anyone actually like when all an episode is is characters traveling to a new destination in space? Is that really anyone's favorite episode? I'm saying we can have a couple of those in there for sure for road trip character drama, but I never want to be trapped in that scenario. In the Japan exclusive SNES game Sailor Moon Another Story, the Old Moon Kingdom even had these little teleportation hubs that remind me very strongly of some other game I think is pretty popular in some circles. And we've seen plenty of crazy alien ships anyway, they can make a new one or just borrow one, or better yet, find an ancient hidden spacecraft made exactly for this reason because of some sort of prophecy or something. So at the start of the anime, the team is actually already split up and each one of them is working on these rebuilding missions. Usagi is probably working on things with Mamoru back on Earth, getting started on, you know, their eventual dystopian reign of Crystal Tokyo, which is the new world capital hundreds of years in the future, where Usagi basically becomes the new god of this world and all who worship her are given immortal youth. 
Sailor Moon lore is really weird, guys. Like, I don't know what to tell you if you don't already know it. Some crazy stuff happens and it is never explored deeply enough. Also, real talk, no wonder the Black Moon clan staged a coup. Like, I like Usagi a lot, but I'm not sure I'd want her to be my new god for the rest of my immortal life. Also, the Mamo Usagi drama is done. It's gone. No more of that. I'm putting a stop to that for good. They are disgustingly in love, and that's fine. Any comedy or drama derived from the relationship is just about how smitten they are with each other. I'm talking Cinderella and Prince Charming. No, Mickey and Minnie Mouse levels of stupid in love. However, the problem is that they're both busy and exhausted from their reign of terror. So under the pretext of just checking in on everyone's status, Usagi basically decides to go on a space vacation and visit all her friends in space who she hasn't seen in a while. The beginning of the first few episodes would be checking in with each scout and the planets that they're trying to make habitable again, and this is where we fix the problem in the source material of not spending enough time developing the rest of the cast. Because each of the inner senshi will be working together with a specific group of redeemed villains on separate planets, so the individual scouts would get at least two episodes devoted to their character development, outside of the five-manned band they're usually split into. It would allow the audience to see a different side of their character outside of how they would usually function as a group. Since the season two villains Ale and Anne's arc ended with them going back into space to find a new home for their mother, the Doom Tree, I think they would have already relocated to a new planet and are a lot further along in the process of rebuilding than anyone else. Hey, maybe they even found Fiori from the first movie. That'd be really nice. And also sort of hilarious considering that they all somehow managed to have a crush on the same two people. I think I would pair them with either Jupiter or Mercury or both. Maybe there could be some minor problem with the Doom Tree, and since Jupiter has a nature association, maybe she's helping them work on it. And Mercury always has a good head on her shoulders, I'm sure she could come up with some useful information. There can be some minor obstacle that they have to overcome, but the important part is getting to put these characters in a unique scenario and seeing how they react under the pressure and how that informs their character. Like, it's been firmly established that Ami's dream is to become a doctor like her mother and help save people's lives, but is that dream still viable after being a Sailor Scout for so long? In the long run, she's probably saved more people's lives by being Sailor Mercury than she ever could just by practicing medicine, but is that something that she wants to still be doing 10 years from now? Makoto's dream was to one day run her own bakery or maybe become a florist and eventually settle down and get married, which couldn't be further from having to fight aliens to save the world. And I know that they all love Usagi and are deeply devoted to her, but should that devotion come at the cost of their own happiness and futures forever? It's a little strange to think that, when the old Moon Kingdom collapsed, Queen Serenity wished for her people to be reborn in a time of peace and happiness. And they did even get to experience that happiness for a short period of time. But their adolescence was basically robbed from these girls due to a magical destiny forcing them to become soldiers in a war they don't even remember starting. There's something heart-wrenchingly tragic about the finale of season one, where Usagi's last thoughts are of her old life and wishing she could go back to those simple days and knowing how absolutely impossible that is. And yeah, I know that recently there has been a change into how Sailor Senshi is translated into English. Previously, it was translated as Soldier, but the new manga and dub have decided to retranslate it as Guardians. Because yeah, I mean, having these girls be teenage soldiers is kind of an uncomfortable concept. But that doesn't change the fact that they're still fighting in a space war. You can take the soldier out of the war, but you can't take the war out of the Guardian, if that makes any sense. And personally, I think there's going to be maybe some drama there that I would like to see addressed. If it's my reboot and I'm allowed to do whatever I want, then I really would like to have a planet where everyone from the Black Moon Clan got redeemed and got to live together doing, I don't know, whatever. If I'm honest, they'd probably all just be living on Earth, and I just want to see the four higher-ups completely fail at trying to manage a normal 9-to-5 job. Like, I would watch an office drama just of them. I think Venus and Artemis would pair nicely with the Amazon trio. I think they'd be a great squad, but also would probably end up being a bit of a disaster. So Venus is actually really interesting. She had arguably the most responsibility placed on her because she was working solo with the police as Sailor V long before anyone else had even awakened, which made her the most experienced out of all of the inner senshi. 
she's technically the leader, considering that Sailor Moon is the person the inner senshi are all trying to protect. Her development in season one is really interesting since everyone knew about her as Sailor V, this cool vigilante hero, and she was working really hard to be someone that they could look up to and rely on. But as the series progressed, she let herself relax a bit and allowed her more carefree, fun-loving nature to show as she became more comfortable with everybody. Becoming a part of a team unit really softened her and took a lot of that responsibility off her shoulders. Codename Sailor V could have also been a really interesting miniseries, but alas. Basically, I would like to see how Venus would lead a team and how her management style would change and how that would be different when she isn't being overshadowed by Sailor Moon. Also, I would like to make Fisheye canonically a trans girl or maybe non-binary or just some explicit form of gender non-conforming at least. As a side note, I really liked the way Heaven's design team handled the character of Venus where there was no explanation given or anything. Everyone just uses she, her pronouns for her, but she still has, I think, a male voice actor. That was really refreshing to have her presentation just not be a big deal and not require any explanation. I would love to see more of that going forward. Maybe Helios could have some sort of relationship with the Amazon trio? Mamaru has this Four Kings of Heaven deal with his generals, and I want that, but for Helios and the Amazon trio, since they all have animal associations, and since Helios is protecting the golden crystal anyway, which is the crystal of Earth and the counterpart to the silver crystal, that just makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, Nahalania got to be redeemed eventually, right? There was some weird time travel thing where she went back into the past and became a child again? Um, let her, let her come to the future. I'd like to see a four-person squad of Nehalania, Chibiusa, Helios, and Saturn just be an absolute mess of teenage drama. We can call these, I've had way too much responsibility placed on my shoulders at an extremely young age, and it has affected my mental health. Quartet. <laughs> Who even were the villains in the next season? The Witches 5? Uh, they don't really need to be redeemed. They weren't in the manga or anime, and I think that's fine. Actually, I think the reason why the Witches 5 are sort of forgettable in comparison to the other villains, I mean, besides Mimet, obviously, is because in a weird way, Uranus and Neptune sort of filled that role in that season of the antagonistic enemy that was eventually redeemed. So the anime really didn't have time to also do that with the minor villains. I mean, in general, the anime ended up redeeming a lot more villains than the manga ever did, which is why I think so many anime fans are attached to the villains. And I think that's really cool. I actually prefer that to just, like, murdering some dudes with magic. Which is why I would have loved this in a reboot. It's like, if you're going to redeem the villains, like, redeem the villains. Like, show them doing good with their lives. But as for that season and The Witches 5, I think Hotaru's dad being redeemed is enough. Which is fun, because that gives Hotaru a total of two moms and two dads. And I just think that's neat. I would love to see an episode where Hotaru has some friends over and all of her parents are just completely overcompensating. Like, would you like to see this drawing Hotaru did and we put on the fridge? Did you know Hotaru can do college level physics? Did you know Hotaru has the power to destroy the universe and everything? I would love to see her parents all absolutely overcompensating and trying to show off how cool their kid is to increasingly absurd heights. But other than that, I think the outer senshi would basically be doing their own thing. They probably are the ones actually doing the traveling from planet to planet and establishing different portals. That would leave Luna and Mars with the Sailor Animates. That could be really cool. They would be a real powerhouse of a team. I think Mars and Luna would do a pretty good job of keeping them in line. The Sailor Animates had this weird relationship of being co-workers that are, weren't really friends, but were just working together for a mutual goal. I think Mars and Luna would be able to rein them in. Oh, and there absolutely should be some follow-up with Kaguya and the Starlights. Maybe they have their own planet, or maybe they've been welcomed back onto Earth. That could be really cool. Ideally, I'd like to spend at least a couple of episodes on each different planet being rebuilt. Because the Inner Senshi have been a unit for so long, I want to see their individual development and where those paths might take them and how their relationship with Usagi changes. And this would span over the first 12 episodes with at least two or three episodes devoted to each team unit. Eventually, this would culminate in a new threat looming over them, or possibly an old one. And this would require the inner senshi to team up again and join Usagi in a battle once more, which would let Usagi realize that even if ultimately she and her friends decide to go their separate ways in life and don't get to see each other as often as they did before, they will still be there for her when she needs them. 
At which point, I would pull the rug out from underneath you all and send Usagi back alone into the distant past before the destruction of the Moon Kingdom for the next six episodes. Finally, we'd get to see the lead up to the fall of the Moon Kingdom and actually realize what was truly lost. The glory of the Moon Kingdom in its prime and all that lost alien technology? What the humans' perception of a race of semi-immortal godlike beings that live on the moon is like, and the obvious tension that would cause between them? What was life like for Endymion's people thousands of years in the past? Beryl would get to be an actual character, and possibly even sympathetic, as we see her struggling to be a good person, but knowing that, ultimately, she's going to be corrupted and bring everything to ruin. We'd finally get to see the Four Kings of Heaven before they were corrupted in their relationship with Endymion. Usagi would have to struggle with what to do. Should she interfere with the past, or just watch as everything plays out, knowing that it's going to end in years of tragedy and struggle? But also possibly ruining her future happiness. What is more important to her, the past or the future? If she changed the future, would this version of her disappear? Is Princess Serenity even the same person as she is now, or have her experiences on Earth shaped her into a completely different person? I mean, obviously, there's only so much dramatic tension you can milk out of that situation. Like, obviously, she's not going to actually interfere with the past and ruin everything. But it is still something that her character would have to consider. And because of this, the audience would finally actually feel something at the loss of the Moon Kingdom, because if the audience isn't actually shown what is at stake and what is at risk of being lost, then they won't actually care, even if it is upsetting for the characters, it won't be upsetting for them. Eventually, Usagi would return to the present with some clarity or knowledge or lost technology from the past that would help her defeat the new bad guy. My finale would end in a large-scale battle where everyone, all the people of Earth, and all the redeemed villains of different planets unite and defeat whatever the ambiguous evil out there causing chaos is. And then the last episode would just be a full party, an absolute fluff of a happy ending. Everyone's invited to Crystal Tokyo, and they're all just gonna have a good old-fashioned hoedown. So yeah, anyway, there are basically an infinite number of possibilities you could take when choosing to reboot Sailor Moon. What would you like to see happen? Maybe Sailor Moon space opera isn't your thing and you'd rather have, I don't know, cyberpunk, post-apocalyptic, Ghibli core, slice of life, cooking? I mean, the Fate franchise got to have a cooking anime and also a Magical Girl spin-off, and that series' premise is based off of a mini murder war. Give me today's menu with the Tsukino family. I would give anything. Or give me a mini murder war spin-off of Sailor Moon. Just something, anything, please. Let me know in the comments which subgenre you'd most like to see a reimagining of the Sailor Moon universe in. Space opera I thought would be the most logical conclusion without drifting too far from the original source material, but I would unironically love a cooking anime with the Sailor Moon cast. I mean, if I'm being honest and I were to reboot Sailor Moon completely, I would probably have Usagi end up with Seiya in the long run instead of Mamoru, but like, I feel like that would be a very hard sell for a lot of people. I don't know, maybe I'll unpack that the next time I talk about Sailor Moon. Alright, I'm signing out, and I just want to let you know that everything's gonna be okay.